Good morning, good morning, good morning, and welcome to Greater St. James AME Church School. We're delighted that you're taking a part of your day to share with us. Before we begin, let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for another day's journey. We thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning. God, as we open our eyes to receive your word once more, we ask you to bless us and help us, God, to embrace an attitude of gratitude. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. As we move now into our lesson, which is entitled An Attitude of Gratitude, be mindful that our focus scripture is found in Leviticus 13 through 14, Luke chapter 5, verses 12 through 16, and chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. The focus scripture may be found in Leviticus chapter 13, verses 45 through 46, and Luke chapter 17, verses 11 through 19. The key verse now is, then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God, with a loud voice that's found in Luke chapter 17 verse 15 and now the focus scripture the person who has the leprous disease shall wear torn clothes and let the hair of his head be disheveled and he shall cover up his upper lip and cry out unclean unclean he shall remain unclean as long as he has the disease, he is unclean. He shall live alone, his dwelling shall be outside the camp. And now Luke. On the way to Jerusalem, Jesus was going through a region between Samaria and Galilee. As he entered a village, 10 lepers approached him, keeping their distance. They called out saying, Jesus, Master, have mercy upon us. When he saw them, he said to them, Go and show yourselves to the priest. As they went, they were made clean. The, then one of them, when he saw that he was healed, turned back, praising God with a loud voice. He prostrated himself at Jesus' feet and thanked him, and he was a Samaritan. Then Jesus asked, were not ten made clean, but the other nine, where are they? Was none of them found to return and give praise to God except for this foreigner? Then he said to him, get up, go your way, your faith has made you well. To God be the glory, an attitude of gratitude. And now, the introduction. This lesson looks at another of Jesus' powerful miracles. This one has features not evident in some other miracles. The passages in Leviticus give an excellent background to the reasoning behind Jesus' instructions to the lepers. At that time, priests had the, the recognized authority to declare who was a leper, to prescribe treatment and to determine who was healed. We must understand the role of the priest to appreciate why Jesus gave instructor, instructions to the lepers. Issues of gratitude and thanksgiving loom large in this story. These features highlight how different persons respond to incidents of God's favor towards them. Some persons take God's grace for granted and show no gratitude for the smile of God. Others are quick to recognize the blessings of God and give suitable praise and worship. We should take note. The issue of obedience is central to this lesson. Elements of it are present in most stories of Jesus' miracles. However, in this one, we see it in plain view. The healing did not occur when Jesus gave the instruction. It happened as the lepers were obeying Jesus' command. We understand this principle to receive extraordinary healing and other favors God grants us. Keep in mind, leprosy was incurable at the time. This fact should affect our attitude to diseases now classified as fatal. 
Do you accept that the power of God can override these conditions? Do you accept that the power of God can override these conditions? One thing we can see through our lesson today is God moves. God moves in the lives of his people. So we must give God glory and also have an attitude of gratitude. And now telling the Bible story, people under 50 years of age may have difficulties putting themselves in a society where people who battle diseases are ostracized and condemned to death. However, people familiar with the general public attitudes in the early days of the HIV AIDS pandemic know we treat AIDS, treated AIDS victims the same way people treated lepers at the time of Jesus. Lepers then had to fight two diseases, physical sickness and social victimization. Leprosy was considered highly contagious, so the priests confirmed, confined confirmed lepers to selected areas away from general society. The lepers in the story probably lived in one of these colonies on the border of Samaria and Galilee. We must note that contrary to social, social norms, at that time Jesus showed no reservations in act, interacting with the lepers. Further, consider that one of the lepers was a Samaritan. As we know, Jews and Samaritans had a relationship like oil and water. They did not mix. So the text highlights for us Jesus' public embrace, his public embrace of marginalized people. A strong message to note. Note also how Luke made it a point to emphasize that a leper who showed gratitude was a Samaritan, an outcast with no entitlement to favors from Jews or their God. We see two important messages here. First, we must always show gratitude and give thanks to God, to God for his favor. This principle holds true even when blessings seem small or routine. Second, Jesus' response to the Samaritan thankfulness underscored warnings he gave in places like Luke 13, verses 28 through 30. People who think they have an automatic right to the kingdom may be surprised on the day of reckoning. Despite their religious activities, God could prohibit them from the kingdom. The people from outside the religious circles could gain entry. As Jesus used to say, let them with ears hear this warning. Jesus' instruction to the lepers also gave a precedent for believers to follow. Christians all also should respect established authorities and norms. It is not advisable to engage in unnecessary confrontation with civil authorities. As the Messiah, Jesus could have ignored the priest's authority and sent the healed lepers home, but their healing would have lacked the required social certification. So Jesus respected the established protocols. Underscore also how Jesus showed no reservations regarding his proximity to the ceremonially unclean men. His openness is a call to people who follow Jesus to extend themselves to those who are rejected by society. Jesus is our prime example of how to walk in love. Love is an action word and our God is love and so therefore it should be shown. Amen, amen, amen. And now the Sankofa. How Jesus responded to the lepers in the gospel story can force us to consider how the church should respond to marginalized people. Maybe we can start at home and look at an AME church's HIV initiative in Southern Africa. In 2006, the AME church asked A. Avita Fuller, a professor of microbiology and immunology, to assist 
the church in formatting appropriate responses to the AIDS pandemic in Africa. The church asked Fuller to assist with the efforts to address HIV's AIDS in countries like Botswana, South Africa, and Zambia. At that time, Zambia was one of the countries, countries hardest hit by the epidemic with a prevalence rate in excess of 15%. Professor Fuller worked with the AME bishops to get information from the scientific research cabinets to the affected people's community. She helped the AME clergy to understand the science related to HIV and AIDS and what could be done to help communities to restrict the spread of the AIDS virus and to care for the effect infected. This initiative was a fantastic display of Christian, of the Christian church sharing the practical gospel. We thank God for Professor Fuller. And we're moving forward now to the life application. Once we come to Sunday school, we understand this lesson is about an attitude of gratitude. When you think about how the Lord woke us up in the morning, to how he wakes us up in the morning, we should give God glory and thanksgiving because he did not have to do it but he did. We have eyes to see, ears to hear, legs to walk, and a tongue to talk. We should have an attitude of gratitude. When you think about an attitude of gratitude, it also just actually is a decision to be thankful, a decision to have a grateful heart. And that is something where we can choose every day of our lives. And now, the life application. Believers accept that God's will decides what happens to believers in their struggles with sickness and disease. Yet scriptures tell us to cast all of our cares upon Christ and seek the prayers of righteous elders which can heal and restore health. Therefore we must actively seek God's healing power when sickness visits. We should do this even when health professionals label our conditions as incurable. Remember that many diseases which were once labeled incurable are now curable. While we trust in medical expertise, we also believe in God who can do the impossible and heal the incurable. If you grew up in a household like mine, your family taught you that no one owes you anything. Therefore, you must show gratitude for anything people offer to you. We must apply it to favors, whether general or specific, which we receive from God. In the lesson text, Jesus shows that God appreciates our gratitude. Many believers testify that showing appreciation for small things lead to greater favors from heaven. Jesus hinted at this in the parable of the talents. It, if it is not yet one of your daily habits. Start thanking God daily for life, for meals, for a place to sleep, for necessity of clothes, for family and faithful friends. When we form a habit of regular thanksgiving, we complain less and enjoy life more. Also, we see more opportunities and have other have better relationships. Establish a practice of expressing gratitude to God to other people daily. As believers, our chief influencer must be Jesus Christ. And like he did, we must make an effort to reach out to the outcasts of society. The Lord ministered to tax collectors who were regarded as outcasts in Jesus' day. Jesus' ministry also reached prostitutes, robbers, the sick, the diseased, the blind, the mute, the mentally ill, and people with all types of incurable diseases. If we are to be faithful disciples, we must follow Jesus' example. So we must find the time and resources to minister to people who others considered the consider the unfortunate or outcasts of society. Consider the lesson 
In Matthew 25, verses 31 through 46, sometimes our spiritual obligations to minister to persons in need conflict with national laws and regulations. In such cases, we must obey the laws as far as possible, but still find ways to fulfill our duty to God. The missionaries who went behind the curtain, the Iron Curtain, when governments were hostile to Christianity showed how to do this. The movement started by these missionaries were so strong that they forced governing authorities to recognize Christianity. God did not equip everyone to undertake these ministries. We can support them, however, do you? In, this, in his ministry, Jesus crossed ethnic boundaries and ministered to all persons who came to him. His ministry to the Samaritans and even to women proved this point. Likewise, we must push against traditional biases and prejudices and minister to people in need, irrespective of their race, gender, or religion. God expects us to love and minister to persons who can see who we can see as a prelude to offering love to him. Assess in the privacy of your own thoughts how well do you do this in this regard. Plan to make the needed changes. Plan to make the needed changes. Now let's be very, very um, real. When you study the ministry of Jesus Christ, you will see that he was criticized for certain things that he did. He was challenged even at times by his own disciples, but he, he knew what he had to do and he knew that he had to fulfill the call on his life. So many times he went around and ignored social norms to meet a need and he met people where they were and made an impact that we can give God glory for. Let's think about how he reached down to pick us up, how we were on a road or traveling down through this journey of life, not knowing the importance of salvation. But someone told us the gospel story. Our hearts were turned and the Lord saved us. The other part of this lesson is that while the lepers had a horrible disease, a physical disease, we had a horrible disease called sin, but Jesus touched us and he made us whole. Now like that one leper who returned and said, thank you, will you be the one to constantly say thank you and demonstrate an attitude of gratitude. Will you be the one to give God glory? Will you be the one to give him praise? And now we're moving to the questions. Why do you think the other nine who were healed of leprosy did not turn back in gratitude? Why do you think? I do believe that it is a choice. We make a decision to be grateful. We make a decision to say thank you. Now we were born in this area and anytime someone did anything for you, you had to say thank you. There are times when you just had to put pen to paper and create thank you notes because people do not have to be good to us, but when they are, it is proper and fitting, fitting to say thank you. Most importantly, when our great God has been so merciful and faithful to us, it's very important that we give thanks to God. And it is a decision that we make every day. Question number two, as discussed, often there is fear and stigma attached to certain diseases. Think about the COVID pandemic. Describe the fears and stigmas and strategies to combat this fear and stigma. Now, when you think about this worldwide pandemic that can actually just be spread through the air, there is a reason to be um, panicked. But a lot of the um, information that is going out through the CDC and also through our health professionals, if we are to listen and take heed and follow the directives, we can combat 
so a lot of the um, issues related to this, but we must be obedient and make a decision to do that. Question number three, how can we nurture an attitude of gratitude in ourselves and help to do so the same in others? How can we nurture an attitude of gratitude? Yet again, there's a song that we sing that says, when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, my soul cries out, hallelujah. Thank God for saving me. When you think there is no way you can hold back your thank yous. When you really think about the distance he has brought us, there is no way that we can just say, oh, I'm not, I'm going to just think about how I got myself up. We have to say thank you because it is only in God that we live, move, and have our being. We also used to sing a song, everything's moving by the power of God. I arose this morning by the power of God. And that is why we should always have an attitude of gratitude. Let's give the Lord a praise right where we are. And the Bible also says, let everything that has breath Praise the Lord. And that is a commandment of God. So we thank God for this lesson today as a wonderful, wonderful reminder to live a life of praise. And now the closing devotion, our closing song, Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. Glorious Things of Thee Are Spoken. And that is found in our hymnal, 521. And now the closing prayer. Dear Father, I thank you for the way you have cared for me all my life. I thank you for my food, clothes, and the breath I breathe. Although these things come to me through human hands, you are the real source of all these blessings. I pray your Holy Spirit will prompt me to praise you and give you glory every day. In Jesus' name I pray, amen, amen, amen. Thank you for joining us for our church school moment. We hope that you will enjoy the rest of your day. And please join us for our worship service virtually or come on down to the sanctuary of Greater St. James and let us have a moment to praise God for his goodness and his mercy and his grace. Have a wonderful day.